Chapter 1. Principles are the link between your actions and your values. Through the years, successful people have experimented with different principles and have identified universally effective ones. Here, Dalio breaks his principles into two groups. The first encompasses his most fundamental life principles, while the second group includes management principles, an extension of the former. To prove the efficacy of these principles, Ray Dalio explains the logic behind them while stating that they stem from his encounters with reality. And so, he advises that you use his principles as the bedrock for creating yours, instead of following them blindly. Therefore, it is important to discuss the fundamentals of principles and how you can gauge the effectiveness of the ones you are currently utilizing. Your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, your values become your destiny. Principles are the link between your actions and your values. When you set values that represent the type of life you want to live, your principles help you incorporate your values into your everyday actions. They allow you to reach decisions when you are faced with difficult choices. It is important to use pre-packaged principles to fabricate new ones while taking into account the goals that you are chasing. The importance of this concept is evident in the lives of successful people who have set up principles that get them what they want. As such, an athlete whose goal is to win would adopt principles that will help them adhere to strict training rules and eating habits. Whereas people who don't have defined principles are less likely to plan a clear path to success. They will react to obstacles randomly, which will estrange them from their predefined goals. But this is just an introduction. For the remaining chapters of this summary, we will go over Ray Dalio's life and management principles. We will also talk about the things that make successful people different from others, a specific strategy Dalio learned from dealing with challenges, and much more. Did you know, Ray Dalio bought his first stock at age 12 for $300. In 2021, at age 72, he's worth over $20 billion. Chapter 2. Ray Dalio's Strategies to Becoming Successful and Avoiding Common Mistakes that People Make now that you've understood the importance of principles, values, and experiences, this chapter will introduce you to Ray Dalio's humble beginnings and how they helped him develop the principles that have brought him thus far. Ray Dalio grew up in a middle-class family as the only son of a stay-at-home mom and a jazz musician. Dalio developed a habit of valuing only schoolwork that interested him. As a result, he did not do well in his early years of learning. In contrast to his performance in school, he showed an impressive ability to make money. He would do all sorts of jobs to make extra cash. Before long, he got sucked into the bubbling stock market and bought his first stock in the 1960s of a company selling at $5 per share. After a long streak of luck in the stock market, he began to feel the full effects of bad investment choices. The experience taught him that there's more to trading than meets the eye. These losses spurred the author to learn how to beat the market. Chasing this newly found goal taught him the following lessons. He realized he could still arrive at the wrong side of the market, irrespective of the amount of work he put in. He discovered that when it comes to the stock market, bad decisions are costly. Also, market consensus could end up being wrong. Therefore, he had to learn how to become an individual thinker. Arriving at these conclusions led him to create strategies that would help him avoid the common mistakes people make. As such, Ray Dalio developed an approach that would allow him to increase his chances of winning. These strategies include a resolution to work for his self-made goals and not for those that others have imposed on him. The decision to improve his capacity to arrive at the best of independent opinions. A commitment to try as much as possible to refrain from becoming overly confident. Ray Dalio used this approach throughout his years in college, his two-year stint at Harvard Business School, and his early years on Wall Street. These principles also helped him stay true to his goals when he founded Bridgewater in 1975, and it still resonates with his life today. You increase your chances of sustainable success if you focus on your ability to create meaningful relationships and meaningful work. Chapter 3 Living a meaningful life depends on how effective we can accept and deal with realities. Ray Dalio considers himself a hyper-realist, as he believes that our propensity for living a meaningful life depends on how effectively we can accept and deal with realities. 
Therefore, he has dedicated his life to discovering the things that matter. Nature has a lot to teach us about life. Observe. Learn. Although his life principle relies on being aware of reality, it does not de-alienate those who believe that dreaming is essential to humanity. In its true sense, being a hyper-realist helps people evaluate their dreams by separating what is real from what is not. By coupling dreams and realities, it becomes easy to infuse the many laws of the universe to translate wishful thinking into achievable goals. In other words, Ray Dalio's most fundamental principle is that seeking the truth in one's realities is the underlying process of achieving good outcomes. Here, he noted that he had devoted his life to understanding how nature works. In essence, he lets the laws of nature reflect in his life choices as they unconventionally differentiate the good from the bad. Beliefs are choices. First, you choose your beliefs. Then your beliefs affect your choices. Roy T. Bennett To Ray Dalio, constantly operating with the laws of nature is the primary prerequisite for all that is good, while defying these laws simply connotes bad. For instance, people who make lots of money from contributing to evolution are not bad. But those who continue to acquire wealth just for the sake of it are on the wrong side of nature and the right side of gluttony. The human capacity to adapt to changes determines our chances of survival. While this is a given, everyone must utilize the cognitive tools available to us to decipher our weaknesses and work on them objectively. People that have found a way of transcending their ego barriers by allowing others to evaluate their weaknesses and adopting the correct response to criticism are often the most successful individuals. In summary, we all need to ground our dreams in reality and find the right motivation to make them happen to live a flourishing life. For this reason, there are no universal tools that quantify success or happiness. Chapter 4 Every decision has its consequences, and the quality of life you'll live tomorrow depends on the choices you make today. Choices are important factors when chasing goals. Goal-getters will constantly find themselves making decisions that will either improve or deteriorate their chances of succeeding. To simply put it, every decision has its consequences, and the quality of the life you will live tomorrow depends on the choices you make today. Let's consider five truths about good decision-making. The most important decisions of the millions of choices we make throughout our lifetime are just five. First, you must decide never to let your limits come between you and your goals. Borrowing from the concept of evolution, only those species that can turn their limitations into strengths, regardless of the pain, will find true success. When you feel the pain, you are on the brink of creating new possibilities that once seemed impossible to you. As such, reflecting on pain can drive you into your next phase. In any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The worst thing you can do is nothing. Theodore Roosevelt Second, it is your propensity for facing harsh realities that will help you make good decisions. In contrast, people who hide from the truth are naturally bad decision makers. Third, people that obsess about the way other people view them will hide their weaknesses. This habit leads such people to choose undercooked life decisions. On the contrary, successful people do not shy away from their inability to have the right answers. Instead, they identify when they need to get help and when they need to acquire more information. Fourth, people that place more value on the first order consequences of their actions over the second and third orders will often make the wrong judgments. For example, people who overanalyze the pain and aches of exercising will not reap the second order consequences of good health and an attractive appearance. Fifth, people who blame their woes on other people or things are not in tandem with reality. These people would rather blame external factors than reflect on their frailties, negating the fundamentals of success. After discovering the core choices you must make, the next thing is to engage the right tactics and design to achieve your goals. Your goals determine the right tactics to utilize and the right people to help you get the job done. Chapter 5. The 5 Steps of Getting the Things You Want in Life When it comes to getting the right results and making the most of your life, there are five distinct steps that you must follow. The idea here is to acquire the right set of disciplines and talents to succeed, while ascertaining that your rational self is at the epicenter of each process. The first of these processes entail that you set goals. This process will help you find what you truly want, and it will help you fixate on it. 
one mistake people make is that they have this cluster of wands, making it impossible to focus and achieve a particular goal. For successful people, this is not the case. They take the pain to go through all their desires, weighing them accordingly, and picking the ones that matter most. Adopting this rule will help you prioritize your goals above good alternatives. In the same way, you must ensure that this process is not limited by your perceived strengths and weaknesses. Do not let your limitations determine the goals you adopt, as you can supplement your weaknesses with the strengths of others. It is those people that see the bigger picture who are good goal setters. The second step requires that you identify and not tolerate challenges. It is normal for everyone to record setbacks when goal chasing. However, the determinant of success is your resilience. Your ability to take challenges head on and identify the hidden gem they carry is the key to sustained success. The third process involves a factual diagnosis of challenges. Instead of jumping into finding solutions, you must first evaluate the cause of the problem and your past experiences with similar problems or those borrowed from other people. All the information garnered from this exercise will paint you a better picture of your impediments and how to tackle them. After you've correctly diagnosed your problems, the next step, which is the fourth, is to draw out a plan that will help solve them. People who skip this step often find themselves relying on luck or randomly adopted ineffective solutions. You must visualize the outcome before choosing the right answers. The last process involves the culmination of all the analysis and planning of previous processes to take meaningful actions. Goal getters use the information at their disposal to make things happen. Chapter 6. Ray Dalio's Management Principles Over the years, Bridgewater has relied on the extensions of Ray's basic life principles. The author explained that he built his company on valuing truth, which is evident in its culture. To fully grasp the range of principles that had helped Bridgewater thrive, Ray decided to break his management principles into the following core classes. The principles for getting the culture right. The principles to get the right people. The principle that will help perceive, diagnose, and solve challenges. The principles that will help make decisions effectively. Value the truth. In the business world, one of the essential principles to adopt is the penchant for truth. There is no reason to fear the truth. Instead, embracing it will equip you with the courage to do what is needed. Do not let loyalty blind you from the truth. Another principle that could help your business is transparency. The practice of hiding behind allegations will spur people to keep their weaknesses a secret, which could be detrimental to progress. The author advised that you record all the proceedings of meetings and make these records available to the relevant people. Whoever is careless with the truth in small matters cannot be trusted with important matters. Albert Einstein Value mistakes and the lessons they teach. Once the truth is in place, it is easy for people to express their shortcomings without fearing backlashes. However, admitting mistakes is not the goal. Instead, you want to establish a culture where people take the time to analyze and learn from them. Know that a culture that promotes creativity entails an innovative process, where mistakes are not swept aside. Innovation comes when people learn from failures. Also, refrain from blaming people, as it could rob them of their confidence. Try to create synergy. Creating the right sync between your employees will promote a culture where people's rights matter. This practice will let people feel free to ask questions when they are lost or feel left out. A synergistic environment relies on the open-mindedness of the people that constitute the system. In other words, you will only have a working rhythm when people are open to new ideas. Chapter 7 the effectiveness of your business culture depends on the type of people that are working for you. Choosing the right people to make responsible. Choosing the right people to make responsible for the smooth running of your business is one of the most important choices that you will ever make. The effectiveness of your business culture depends on the type of people working for you. You must select, train, test, evaluate, and sort the people you have. As noted earlier in the summary, you should verify that these people fit into your design. If you discover that some individuals do not value truth and openness as much as you would like, it is okay to let them go. While selecting, you should consider candidates who are not afraid to judge themselves objectively, those who don't shy away from their weaknesses. Also, you must invest more time into hiring people who can shoulder responsibilities. 
These people will fill critical positions, and they will occasionally design, hire, and sort to improve the business success rate. Hire the right way or bear the penance. The diversity of abilities and values should feature extensively in your hiring process. You must prioritize these factors over skills. People can learn new skills, while abilities and values are almost impossible to modify. You could also rely on past reviews and references when ascertaining the suitability of a candidate for a role. Manage your team the right way. Know that you will only have the best working culture when you discover what makes each individual in your team tick and how to manage them. Acquiring this information will help you trust the abilities of your employees or team members, as you will develop the confidence to delegate tasks. This type of working relationship depends on how much you understand those who work for you and how much they understand you. Chapter 8 the principle that will help perceive, diagnose, and solve challenges. In this chapter, we will go over principles that will turn you into a super problem solver. By applying the principles in this chapter, you will train your mind to detect and solve problems efficiently. Adopt ways to sniff out problems. As a leader, one of your core responsibilities is to perceive problems way before they become unmanageable. Nonetheless, you must visualize issues as opportunities to improve. In your quest for unraveling problems, you should take it upon yourself to do most of the heavy lifting and teach your team to do the same. Always be on the lookout and judge all outputs by comparing them with a standard that exudes excellence. This practice will require an effective communication model. There's no room for vagueness in the art of problem hunting. Diagnose the problem. While pinpointing the root cause of a problem, it is advisable to see how the actions and inactions of people played a role in it. In most cases, issues are traceable to specific individuals. If this is not the case, then it is the design, system, or culture that is faulty. Therefore, diagnostics give you a clearer picture of the matter on hand and how it relates to your design and people. Search for answers. Discovering that your design is the problem or that the people involved are not finding the right balance should spur you to modify your current system. Depending on how critical the problem is, you could make small tweaks, replace the ineffective parts, or completely overhaul the design. The principles that will help make decisions effectively. Manage your ignorance. The biggest mistake people make is that they assume that they know it all. To avoid these trappings, you must realize that there is no harm in not knowing. Acknowledging your limits will help you determine when to seek help and when to acquire more information about your current situation. Constantly look for people that would critique your opinions and show you where you might have missed it. Consider the consequences of your decisions. Every decision has its risk or reward ratio, and it is your job to know how much you stand to gain or lose by making a hard choice. In light of this principle, the author warned that you do not bet too much on uncertainties. Conclusion Life is governed by principles, and it makes sense when you think about it. There would be so much chaos and unpredictability if principles didn't exist. Natural laws make for consistency of results. If something is operated on a principle, it becomes borderless. Anyone from any part of the world can apply the principle and get the same result as every other person. In this summary, we went over Ray Dalio's principles for life and business management. However, it's important that you heed Dalio's advice about not taking his principles, hook, line, and sinker. Use them instead as bedrocks for generating your own principles. Even if you're going to apply his lessons, test them first to see that they work for and suit your unique situation. Apply the things you have learned to your life, do it consistently, and watch as you begin to produce desired results. Learn to be an observant person and ask lots of questions. You will grow in wisdom faster that way. Life has a lot to teach. So much insight is embedded in nature, but only for the grasp of people who are careful enough to observe and learn. Don't say you are too busy. Go about your days with an open heart, ready to observe consistencies in life and see what meanings you can derive from them. Lastly, seek to find the truth and nothing but the objective truth. There is tons of information flying around in this digital age, but not all of them contain the truth. Developing the ability to discern truth will help you a lot in life. Try this. Study and meditate daily. It will sharpen your mind and enhance your judgment.